This presentation is brought to you by Dark Corporation, your trusted e-business partner since 1992. Hi, my name is Jay Borden with Dark Corporation, and welcome to the presentation, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, an executive guide to effective key performance indicator selection. Dark Corporation is made up of four key business units. Consulting services, which is comprised of pro program management, functional, technical, and architectural services, with an emphasis on business intelligence, optimization, and organizational change management. Dark's managed services, production support, and 24 by 7 functional and database managed services. Dark Academy, specializing in organizational change management, communications, documentation, and training. And ISICs, accelerators for interface, interfaces and conversions, which feature in mergers and acquisitions and global consolidation applications. As some background on myself, I'm currently the Chief Financial Officer with Dark Corporation and have been for nearly 12 years. I have over 20 years of experience in the financial management realm. Prior to coming to Dark Corporation, I was Director of Finance for Rand McNally and & Company. And prior to that, I started my career with KPMG where I was uh, a senior manager in the audit practice, serving clients such as Motorola, Alberto Culver, Bell & Howell. As we turn to the agenda, the main goal that we are hoping to provide by this presentation is to provide insight. Insight from the vantage point of a financial manager, the view from the driver's seat, if you will. It's important that the uh, perceived value and therefore the necessity of enterprise performance management initiatives and business intelligence initiatives can be viewed through the end user, which is what I mean by the driver's seat. This is not an implementation-based view, but rather a deliverable-based view for you to gain a better understanding of how financial managers might come to rely on the key performance indicators that are derived in a business intelligence solution. So as, our, as we go into our introduction, you'll gain some grounding in terminology and some necessary concepts to understand how we arrive at a uh, selection of key performance indicators. You'll understand the role that the key performance indicators, or we'll call them KPIs, play in the execution of a strategy and an Oracle BI implementation. We'll review an approach for KPI selection. This is really the, the, the uh, core of the presentation, uh, the gathering of KPIs for potential inclusion and then we'll discuss the filters that you would apply for the prioritization and ultimate selection of a truly set of key performance indicators. And we'll identify the common challenges, things to avoid, if you will, in any KPI selection process. As I mentioned, it will be important to get grounded in some terminology uh, to understand the uh, concepts that we'll be covering in this presentation. At the, uh, at the broadest level, is Enterprise Performance Management. Enterprise Performance Management, or EPM, is a discipline that aligns performance with strategy. In Oracle terms, uh, the, the suite of Enterprise Performance Management solutions includes business intelligence, uh, includes data warehousing, and some other performance management applications. But when you look at the uh, traditional business, business cycle of creating a strategy, planning, monitor and analyzing, and then acting and adjusting, cycling back to strategizing again. This is, the, uh, this is the range that the discipline covers in enterprise performance management. Balanced Scorecard is a very specific strategic planning, uh, planning and management system that was developed by uh, Kaplan and Norton. There's many different uh, strategy planning and management systems, but this one seems the best aligned with Oracle EPM and business intelligence solutions. I will get more into uh, the nature of the balanced scorecard as we go along. Strategy maps are visual representations of the strategy of an organization. Uh, what it does is it illustrates the cause and effect relationships between different strategic objectives. Critical success factors are the elements necessary for an organization to achieve its mission, which is uh, uh, another way of just saying succeed. Um, while there may be many success factors that an organization identifies, Truly, uh, what we're trying to identify are the critical success factors, which ultimately are, are what's measured by KPIs. Before I get to the definition of key performance indicators, KPIs, I can discuss some of their siblings, uh, some of its siblings that it's not. 
Uh, key result indicators tell you how you've done in a perspective or a critical success factor, whereas uh, result indicators kind of just tell you how you've done. Now, performance indicators tell you what to do, and key performance indicators tell you what to do to increase performance dramatically. So now we come to a formal definition of KPIs. Let's hang our hats on this one. This is a set of measures focusing on those aspects of organizational performance that are the most critical for the current and future success of the organization. It's not a, not a particularly new concept. Uh, KPIs were originated in the 1960s by McKinsey. Um, but the, the key words in here are most critical, and that's going to be a recurring theme throughout this presentation. You know, many aspects of an organization are measurable, but that doesn't make them key to the organization's success. What I'll try to help uh, us understand now is the role that the KPIs play in strategy execution. These, uh, these bullets uh, kind of cascade from the highest level to lower levels. You know, an organization's mission, vision, and values give rise to strategic objectives. Um, strategic objectives really is a combination of the ends for which the organization is striving and the means by which it's seeking to get there. Um, I mentioned before uh, kind of the uh, origins of the balanced scorecard. The balanced scorecard uh, is tied to four different perspectives of a business. You know, normally someone like me is mostly focused on the financial perspective of the business, but what, what, gives, uh, what gives this particular approach balance is that it focuses on four different perspectives. The uh, financial perspective, which asks the question, to succeed financially, how should we appear to our shareholders? Uh, the customer perspective, which is basically asking the question, to achieve our vision, how should we appear to our customers? The uh, internal process perspective is uh, a matter of asking ourselves the question, to satisfy our shareholders and customers, what internal business processes must we excel at? And lastly, the learning and growth perspective, which is asking ourselves the question, to achieve our vision, how will we sustain our ability to change and improve? Now, uh, relationships between strategic objectives have to be analyzed in order to identify what is truly critical, or what I defined before as critical success factors. In order to get to that point, um, we employ the use of strategy maps, uh, another concept that I mentioned earlier. And basically what that is, is to lay out all of, the, all of the success factors that would be necessary to advance the strategic objectives. When you lay those all out, and you start drawing relationships between them, uh, cause and effects relationships, in the end, the success factors with the, most, uh, with the most lines connected to them will demonstrate themselves and reveal themselves as the ones that are most critical. And here's the connection. KPIs measure critical success factors. So once we're able to arrive at that set of critical success factors, uh, the KPIs will follow, and uh, I will cover more on that in a bit.